hey guys welcome to a brand new video and in this video we're going to be coding out the phishing detection process we talked about in the last video if you've not watched that i'll leave a link to that in the description below let's get right into this so this is the whole process and we're going to be coding this out in python so i have created a folder here and i'm just going to create a new file let's call this phishing detection tool so pdt.py so the first thing I want to do is go out to DNS Forza and come over to code snippets here and copy out the Python code. So we are going to use requests and I'm just going to copy the requests code. So I'll paste this here and the next thing we want to do is tell our code that this is a Python code. So I'll do uh shebang being python 3. so yeah we have our code here and let's try to run this i'm just going to change this domain to hillbytes.com then let's go back to our terminal let's decrease this create a new tab then let's change the permissions on this then pdt.py then i'm just going to try this pdt and we have our results here in a nice json format so we have hillbytes.com we have whole bytes here we have hillbytes and different permutated uh, domains there so the next thing we want to do let's clear this out the next thing we want to do is allow our user to impute the domain they want to impute so under our import here we have our dns for that url we have our api key here so i'm just going to create a d then impute then i'm going to put in enter domain then i'm just going to put in a format text in this payload here then let's do domain equals to colibraces let's put this back dot format d so this just tells our program that we want to collect input from D and want to put that input here. So let's space this out. So the next thing we want to do is save this our JSON response we had the other time. Save that response, which is this, into a JSON file. So we want to open a JSON file here. So let's import JSON. Then let's open a JSON file. So we'll call this JSON file equals to open then we'll call this json file data domains or anything let's call it data or json put this in quotes then we'll set this to write mode then we want to write to this json file so we'll just do json file dot write then what do we want to write to this JSON file? I want to write out this response.txt. So we'll put this here and we'll close our JSON file. JSON file dot close. So this is how we write our output to that JSON file. So let's run this and let's see what we have with our program so far. So let's Let's put some comments to explain our program. DNS for the API. Then let's delete this print since we are saving to a file now. So I'll call this write to JSON file. So 
let's save this and let's try this out so i'll call my program pdt.py i'll enter my domain hillbytes.com and let's run this so now the program is done and we have our json file let's open firefox and let's check what we have in this json file so i'll drop this here and we have a really neat json file here we have the original domain hill bytes we have whole bytes and some other permutated domains so what we want to grab out of this is the domains we don't need other information so we just need hill bytes whole bytes and other domains so json files are like dictionary and lists in python so we're going to treat this file like that so what we need to do is check for a key called domain so we can see all these are uh, all our domains are stored in a key called domains and just pull out the domains from that key so we're going to treat this like a list and dictionary and we're going to pick out our domains from this so to do this we'll have to open the json file again so let's just do json file equals to open and the name of our file which is data.json then we'll put this into read mode then we'll set this file to a variable let's call this variable values so values equals to json dot load so we are loading the content of the json file into the variable values so values equals to json dot load json file json file so now the file is ready for reading so what we can do to this is uh we can pick out those domains with a for loop and store them in a list so i'm just going to write first domains first domains then i'm just going to create an empty list here then i'm just going to say for i in values which is the whole json data first domains which is the list we just created now let's copy this out first domains dot append i then we're going to pick out the key which stores our domains which is domain so this is the key this is the value so we're just going to pick out the key and we're going to print out the values and store those values into first domain so i domain which is this key here so i'm just going to print this out let's print false domains to see if this works so now we're just going to cut out this part of the code and i'm just going to paste this here so we'll just remove that part of the code to focus on reading this json file and picking out the domains properly so once we get that right we can put back that part of the code so let's run this so yeah it picks out the domains from the json file so we have all the forced domains in a list here the next thing we want to do is um take these forced domains and check which of these domains are live so first let's set a white list like we have in our diagram here so i'm just going to set a white list here so let's just say white list calls to uh let's see hillbytes.com and hillbytes.com so these are the two domains in our white list and let's create a code that checks if all these forced domains are live then it's going to put all those live domains in another list so let's call this live domain checker 
for the live domain checker, we're going to create a new list. Let's call this live domain. And we'll put this in an empty list. Then what we want to do for this is create a for loop for D. Let's just call this D for D enforced for domains enforced domains. Then we're going to use the response module to check for live domains here. So let's just create a try and accept. So we'll try. Let's create a variable called website. Then we have these domains here, but these are just domains, but they are not websites. So we need to attach um, HTTP or HTTPS to this. So we'll just do something like this. I'm just going to do HTTP. Then I'll do plus D because D is going to be our iteration here to check through all these domains. Then we're just going to do get equals to requests dot get website. Then we're just going to do some checks with um requests here. I'm going to put verify equals to false. Then we are going to do another check. We are going to do allow redirect equals to false. Then we are going to put a timeout, timeout equals to five seconds. So this will help us control some errors with the request module. So we'll put in a, an if statement here next. So we'll do if get dot status code equals 200 so if the response of the um, website is 200 that means the website is live if the website is live we're going to append them to live domains so live domains dot append t so we're using the same technique we used here here but this is just using the requests module to check for live websites so let's back out of this and let's put our accept then we are going to use an accept to sort out all the errors we can have with the request module so i'll just do requests dot exception dot requests requests exception as e then i'm just going to do continue so under this let's print out let's just print out print live domains and let's try out our code here uh for d in false domains Let's try this again. So request is going out to check which of these domains are live. So our code was able to tell us that these three domains are live. It didn't do for Hillbytes because Hillbytes doesn't have an HTTP version. It only uses HTTPS. So um, that's, it just keeps that and that's good for us. So let's confirm some of these domains. I'm just going to open up Firefox here and let's go to Hillbyte, Hillbyte.com. Let's go to hillb.yts.com. That's also a live website. So let's close this out. And the next thing we want to do is compare these um, live domains with our whitelist. So we want to check if any of these domains are in our whitelist. And the ones that are not in our whitelist will be sent up to another list called fish domains. So let's write out a code to make this comparison for us. So I'm just going to write fish domains equals to we we'll use a for loop here also item for item in 
live domains if item not in whitelist. So it's checking if live domains is not in whitelist, put that every other thing in another list called fish domains. Let's print uh, fish domains. Let's clear this. Let's run this. So since hail bytes is in our whitelist, hail bytes was removed from the list, and now we have just this and this in our fish domains. So I'm going to turn this list into a string so it'll be easy for us to send out emails. I'm just going to say fish domains equals to then let's just use a uh, pipe sign dot join fish domains so now if we print out fish domains it won't be in a list again but it will print out as a string so let's try this out so here we have our two fish domains separated with this pipe sign the next step is to send an email alert of these two domains so if you come over to um your browser here there is a guide i'm going to put this guide in the description below on how to send out emails with python and we are going to use some codes from this guide so i created an email we are going to use for this api tester 7 at gmail.com and I'm just going to copy out. I've created a quick code we can use. Then let's let's name this send email. I'm going to explain this code snippet to you. So this is the port for SSL. This is our SMTP server. That's our email server, which is Gmail. This is our email. That's the email I created here. API tester seven. Then this is the receiver email. This is the sender email. This is the receiver email. And this is the password to the email and we'll put in our message here and let's just call this message fish domain so it's going to send out fish domains so this other code snippet does the sending and this is just a simple code snippet you can use to send out emails to your gmail i'll bring back our code let's clear this i'll bring back our dns forza code here and we'll try this from scratch. I also need to do some imports to make our email sending work. So I'm just going to import. Um, if you look at the guide here, we need to import some things. We need to import SMTP lib into import SSL. I'm going to make all those imports now. I'll import SMTP lib and I'll also import SSL. So we should be good to go now. So let's recap on our code. Our code should be able to ask us for a domain and force these domains with DNS Forza, save our forced results into forced domains, then check if those forced domains are live, then save them into live domains, then compare the live domains with our whitelist here and send the result and save the result as fish domains and send us the list of the fish domains. So let's run this code. Let me save this and let's run this. So I'll put in hillbytes.com. Our code is done here. We've run our code and let's go over to our email and see if um we have our alert here so this was able to send the alert of possible fish domain so let's check this out they will need to warn our users about this domain see how similar this is to hillbytes.com we need to warn our users about this domain and the next step you can take after this is probably create a cron job or a scheduled task to run this probably every day or every week and keep going out there to find possible phishing domains or brand impersonation websites. 
we've been able to build out this whole process. We're able to put in hailbytes.com into DNS Forza and generate a list of false domains. Then check if these domains are live. Then compare these live domains with our whitelist and produce a blacklist of possible phishing domains. With about 60 something lines of code here, we've been able to create a working phishing detection and prevention tool that we can use. So this is a very practical tool you can start using in your organization to prevent phishing attacks. And I hope you learned something from, new from this video and I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, don't forget to like, comment, share and subscribe. If you have any questions about this, leave them in the comments below. Don't forget to follow Hillbytes on LinkedIn to get more information about stuff like this. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye.